So what is repentance? We're not going to go into a lot of scriptures to define it. We could. We could go into the Greek. We could go into all that. But bottom line, repentance encompasses this. It's a change of mind, a change of feeling, and a change of purpose. Mm. It always involves turning from something and turning to God. It's not just turning from something, trying to do it your own way in another way. Right. In other words, you were living in sin. That's your own way. But now you're going to do your own way of getting rid of the sin and try this religious deed over right, here. Right, right. It's not that. No, you're turning from sin, turning from your own good deeds, your own efforts, throwing yourself on the mercy of Jesus Christ, believing that when he died on the cross, he assumed your guilt and shame and died for you so that you could be free. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Luke 13 verse 1 says, There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, <laughs> you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. That's profound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, people like to compare themselves to others and say, well, I'm not as bad as that guy. Yeah. I mean, look at them. They died in an earthquake. Mm -hmm. They must have been horrible people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But Jesus said, no, they weren't any worse than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And then he brings the attention back to them. But if you don't repent, yeah. because everyone has to repent. That's right. The Bible says in Romans chapter three, there is none righteous, no, not one. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, what's interesting to me in this, what Jesus said here was the first example of people. It says that Pilate mingled their blood with the sacrifices they were performing. So they were like, they had their sheep and their goats and they're doing a sacrifice unto God. And then Pilate comes in and has them slaughtered. The Romans came in and killed those who were doing the sacrifices and mixed their blood with the blood of the animals that had just been slaughtered. And Jesus said, you think you're worse off than them? Unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Wow. What is he saying? Those religious people died and went to hell. And they were actually... In the middle of a sacrifice. Yeah, like doing something spiritual. Yeah. So going to church or going to the temple or going to the mosque or doing this religious ceremony, fasting, praying feeding the poor. All of these things are good. They're okay. But they won't save you. Right. You have to repent. You have to repent. And what does that mean? You change your mind, you change your feeling, and you change your purpose. Basically, I'm not going to do it my own way anymore. I'm not going to live in sin, and I'm not going to do my way of getting forgiveness of sin. I'm repenting of sin, and I'm saying, Lord Jesus, you did it because I couldn't. You shed your blood because I needed a Savior. Amen. You know, people can listen to this and think, well, Mark, that's really harsh, you know, the things that we're sharing. But actually, it's really good news because you don't have to figure out if it applies to you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Because it applies to everyone. Mm -hmm. There's only one name given among men by which we must be saved. There's nothing for you to figure out. Yeah. You just hear it, you believe it, you repent, and you receive him. Yes. Amen. Jesus said it. He said, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No one can come to the Father God except through me. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Why could he say that? Because he's the only one who was born of a virgin. He's the only one who lived a sinless life and worked miracles the way he did. He's the only one who went to the cross and shed his innocent holy blood, was buried. He's the only one whose soul went to hell and then he rose again victorious Hallelujah! on your behalf. Thank you, Lord. No other person's done that. No other person qualifies. No one even comes close. He, there's one God and one mediator between God and people, the man, yes. Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. And he loves you so yes, much. Yes, yes. Everything he did, he did because he loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.